Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's have a look at the new project template workflows in Adobe Premiere Pro. Anytime you're starting a project with elements that you've used before, common elements like a show opening, music credits, uh, a bug like I have in the corner, it's a really good idea to save a Premiere Pro project and use that as a template. Now, the first question um, I get is, well, why don't people just copy a project and rename it? Well, because you forget to rename it and resave it and you overwrite the project. So Premiere Pro now allows you to pick and add any Premiere Pro project as a template. Two important things to recognize. First of all, it's not a special file. A, a template in Premiere Pro is just a, temp, a Premiere Pro project. The second one is nothing is in the project. They're all links. So all of the photos, music, video, audio, everything is still linked. So you still have to manage that on the original project. All right, let's go have a look. So when you're starting a new project in the top left and it, you're in the import mode, this is the new drop-down menu project template. And Adobe gives you three defaults, one for broadcast, one for social, and then a standard one. You can add as many new templates as you want. And there's a very handy open templates folder. This is the place that Premiere Pro is going to go looking for those templates. So if you want, you can bypass the ad here, just copy a bunch of assets and drop them into that folder. Next time you open that drop down menu, they'll show up. But let me show you what's in these uh, defaults. So we go to the broadcast one. Also very important, not only naming this, but picking a location. Too many new users are used to working on something like a mobile phone that doesn't have a file structure they choose, the phone chooses. It's a computer, folks. You got to choose where things are so you have to remember it. So I'm going to go out to my D drive and just create a new folder. So I'll click in the project location. That's not new. That's been there. And I'll choose a location. I'm just going to go out to my D drive, grab a new folder and call this uh, product templates and choose that folder. And I'll call this first one broadcast. I'm not going to import anything or turn anything on. I'm just going to show you what's inside that. So when you open it up, there are a bunch of folders or bins as they're called that are empty for footage, audio, graphics, music, and photos. This is great because if you have a, a, a structure you'd like, you can reuse that structure anytime. I love this. And then at the bottom, there are three other folders with some sequences in them. 2398P uh, for progressive, 25I for interlaced, PAL, this is for European, and 2997 um, interlaced NTSC. When you open these up, you'll get a bunch of choices in here, like what of the audio setups. In here, there are four, six, and eight mono discrete audio tracks. Open that up and you can see there it is. Mono tracks are really popular for working with uh, broadcast. They're way easier to control. Uh, Premiere Pro can have standard tracks that can have mono and stereo in one, one track, and that's a nightmare for broadcast. So this is a good setup. Obviously, you can uh, add as many as you want. Now, in broadcast, there's probably a, a specific format you want, but again, you can load that into the project. I'm going to close this one. Go back to new project. And I also want to mention that this new project template will only come up if you're creating a new project. So if you have a project open and you come back to import, that won't be uh, showing. But if you started a new project with another project open, it will come up. So let's go look at social. And I'll name this social. And it's, it's still in the same location. That's a sticky setting that's remembered. And for this one, I am going to grab this particular um, clip. And you'll see why in a second. So for this one, um, it, it does open up 
this and I don't want that. I don't like the preview area. If you want to see the preview area, open it up. There's a couple of, of different captions, uh, captions on white and black background, and then a bunch of social uh, sizes for Facebook vertical. And there are two items in the, in the uh, timeline. One is an overlay. These show you all the places that, uh, in this example, Facebook, uh, vertical, this, this is where the stuff will show up. So if in case you had something very specific in an area, you don't want it hidden by that overlay, you can see it here and move it around. Also, it's alerting you to what will be cut off on the outside edge. And what you do is you replace, you can see here it says replace this with your current content. So if I delete that and bring in that clip, there's my clip. I specifically chose a horizontal video in a vertical video to show you there's an easy way to uh, work with video that way if you go to your effects and look for reframe for auto reframe. Double click to add that. And now that clip is always, the person is always in the frame. Uh, let's go back to the other projects that's the vertical, there's an Instagram reel, and all of these, you can see it has the, the size of them, TikTok vertical, 1080, 1920, a whole bunch of uh, Twitter or X sizes. And again, showing you where the overlay will be. Then this is the YouTube ad universal safe zone for all screens. So if you put something in here, um, it will help you understand how it's going to look on each one of the screens. So just to show you what I was mentioning before, if I go back to import, you'll see the templates are not there, but if I chose a whoops, file new project, it pops up. So you only get to pick a template when you're making a new project. So let's keep going. All right, and the last one is just a standard one. Again, making sure I'm putting it in the right spot. This one's pretty simple. Again, you get a bunch of uh, folders that are empty for you to put in your footage, audio, graphics, music, and photos. And there are two sizes. 1080p and Ultra HD 4K. These are 2398, but if you want, with the sequence selected here, you go into the sequence settings if you want and change that to something else like maybe 2997 or 25 frames a second. But it's great to have these uh, set up. Um, I use this for my show all the time. The bug that's in the corner, wherever it is, the opening graphics, the credits, um, all the music, everything is in a project and I import that. Before I had to go and import that in the, in the uh, media browser, but now let's go add that. So I'll grab a new project. Uh, this time I'm going to show, choose add. And it, it wants me to pick the place where that is and I've saved it in this location. So it's going to copy this. It's not going to, to change this or move this at all. When I click open, I'm going to get a dialog box to name this new project template, and I'm calling this Sport Talk Template. And I'll click Save. And it's now in this top list. It wasn't there before, and if we go to the Open the Templates, there it is in my Templates folder. So there's the Sports Talk. I'll name this one ST and click Create. And in this example, I have a timeline already made uh, with my opening graphics, thank you, motion array, and my background with a lower third that pops out, and I would put in a green screen on V2 and audio on uh, A1. I've got this bug here, which a good idea is to hit the uh, lock and lock this track. That way you can cut a whole show up and never have to end up with the, the bug being cut up in multiple spots. My bug is always uh, locked off and then I change the, the duration when I'm done the edit. At the end, I've got music and other credits. But now I can start working on my show without having to re-import all of that other stuff. 
The, the project templates are great. Of course, you can add as many project templates as you want. And it's really important to the new users. None of this is in Premiere Pro. Too many people think that stuff goes into the program. Nothing goes in the program. Premiere Pro is a program. It opens projects. What's in this project? a bunch of um, linked media. So you still have to have links to all of the stuff that's in this Premiere Pro project. So just keep that in mind when you're, when you're making your templates, that they're all linked properly. You're not deleting all the stuff. Uh, maybe create a templates media folder somewhere if you're reusing things. Um, and that way when you're opening it up, it's always accessing that same folder. So there you go, template-based workflow. It's, it's really just a bunch of projects, but Adobe has made it so much easier now by giving that little drop-down menu. Thank you so much, Adobe. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us some more? You can do that on videorevealed.com slash shop. Donate once, monthly, any amount. Thanks to all of our wonderful continued donors. There's lots of free stuff to download there and even more in the members section. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith. It's my job to get so excited about something that might seem simple, but will prove to be very important for you.